So one of my audience members asked me to take a look at the Digital Foundry's retest review of Gotham Knights. Uh, Shout out to you, Alessandro. You said, hey, man, do you want to go ahead and check out what it is that they've actually, you know, come around to in regard to Digital Foundry's new review? So uh, I'm going to read this comment here, by the way, just so that you guys don't say I'm pulling out some comment from thin air. Say, hey, would you love, uh, hey, VG, would you love to a critique video? We'd love a critique video on the recent upload of Digital Foundry. They said Gotham Knights is now fixed and graphics look amazing. Spoiler equals the graphics were all, always were amazing. P.S. What do you think about Arkham Origins Easter Egg and Gotham Knights? By the way, there are a lot of Origins Easter Eggs, and uh, Alessandro over here has been showing some of them to me. But we'll look at today's video in the perspective of, say, how Digital Foundry came to slightly newer conclusions. So first of all, uh, a lot of their review was based around the the fact that you know there have been some fixes regarding say the you know frame rates they also talked a little bit about say some of the you know graphics fidelity and how things have improved overall but i'd not only watch this review i went back and rewatched their former review where that review was heavily slanted towards doing a lot of comparisons towards arkham knight in regard to things like combat the open world the visuals and so on and so forth and i remember this game gotham knights got hammered because according to them, the Arkham Knight game looked better than Gotham Knights. I never conceded this particular line of reasoning because I believed strongly that Arkham and Gotham, the two games, Arkham Knight and Gotham Knights, decided to go with different art styles. It wasn't until recently that I started to see evidence of this, that the art style that Gotham Knights went with is actually an established art style, and it's not necessarily original. So let me show you what's been going on. I've been looking at this stuff and archiving it for a few weeks now. So Rob Trench over here in 2020, I don't know who this is. That you know, they seem to have a good amount of followers. So I guess they, uh, you know, maybe post a bunch of stuff about Batman. And he said the neon cyberpunk aesthetic of Joel Schumacher's Batman films were something was something to behold. And I doubt we ever see Gotham City look like this in live action again. So apparently, there's a neon esque version of the you know, depiction of Gotham City that's actually been done in media before in multiple iterations, by the way. And they eerily, to me, maybe not to you, but I'm sure maybe we can point out some similarities. They look like the Gotham Knights rendition of (laughs) the game, of Gotham City in the game. Isn't that crazy? And anybody that's criticized Gotham Knights in, say, oh, the way the game looks, has not considered this aspect. I haven't seen anyone, and I've read thousands of comments. This is basically the channel that has, in my opinion, more Gotham Knights videos than any other YouTube channel that's existing right now, except somebody beats me to the punch. But I know my Gotham Knights playlist alone is like 500 videos, over 500 videos, and I still have more videos pertaining to the subject matter in other playlists uh, or whatever it may be. And, And if you actually go back and think about it, We've been looking at this game since the beginning, and this game looks eerily like what the Batman Forever and Batman and Robin movies, I think that's what Joel Schumacher was able to depict, I think, uh, actually does look like. A lot of the neon lighting, and I think you can actually tell because a lot of the developers and the art uh, directors for this game, they seem to be of that Batman ilk. They seem to have been heavily influenced by that Batman rendition, and they had no, um, in my opinion, reserve in depicting the world to have that kind of neon-esque uh, look. Not necessarily all of the cyberpunk, according to Rob Trench, in a sense, but it, seemingly, I mean, you know, you got drone operators, uh, you know, in your, um, what's the name of this uh, faction, uh, the regulators, and so on and so forth, with their guns and, you know, the way the guns have, like, some different effects and so on and so forth. The VFX in this game, they just seem to resonate and reek all of the... S- you know, cyberpunk-esque type depiction. I was even looking through Reddit and there is a, uh, there's a click, that I said there's a click here. There's a, a subreddit that actually showed the different Batman Gotham City vibes. And you can tell that Arkham City itself does take on some uh, level of, you know, the Batman renditions saved from like, uh, something that Snyder maybe adopted or maybe they found another one. I don't know what they're, um, you know, influence would have been uh, but they did say that the arkham asylum games for the most part is very grant morrison is that his name uh, that's his depiction of the you know of arkham asylum that's what they used to make the game so their arkham city and arkham knight looking actually very different would tell you that they decided to 
implement Arkham Knight with a different vision overall from what it is that they had. Whereas you see Gotham Knight seeing Batman and Robin, the neon-esque Batman Forever, the neon-esque style, is what I think was adopted into Gotham Knights. But, you know, a lot of people allow for people to tell them what to think. You can't let that happen. That's why I am highly critical of critics. Even myself, when I get criticized as well, I run around and I look for ways to figure out where weaknesses are in my argument. So first of all, my argument actually was in regard to how I saw Gotham Knights Open World was coming from the art perspective, which is very subjective, don't get me wrong, but no artist can, in a sense, dispute my arguments in terms of how artists can choose what art direction they want to go with. Because I think everybody came up with this whole, oh, Arkham Knight looks better because they preferred the art style rather than, say, Gotham, which, you know, in Gotham Knights, they were taking the art style of something that had actually been a landmark in cinema and putting it in their game. So I went with that particular argument saying art styles are different. And so I think even a digital foundry, their own depiction of the world, to me, I consider it throwaway. I think I can only maybe vibe with, say, the technical analyses like TAA, graphics, fidelity, and so on and so forth, which is their expertise, by the way. But everything else, when they talked about the visuals of the game being inferior to me, is all subjective and did not consider the other parameters when it comes down to it. So, again, their new review or their retesting, yes, does highlight, say, some different aspects of the game like, oh, yeah, you know, maybe now they've improved the graphics and the frame rate in some areas and whatever and whatnot, yeah, But at the end of the day, they still talk about those little things about the visuals. And I say, throw that stuff away, man. Because if anybody was looking at Gotham Knights from that perspective of, oh, this is what we've seen in the old Batman movies in terms of the way, you know, Gotham is represented, they would probably not have come to those conclusions themselves. Because again, gamers, for the most part, I don't know what their influence in terms of Batman is, but I strongly remember Batman Forever. I remember that movie. I grew up I grew up in third world Africa. Didn't have access to movies except the ones that were shown on local TV stations. So I remember this one TV station was finally showing Batman Forever. And I think it was around 96 or so, it was just a year out. And I was so excited. I was, I was watching this movie in the afternoon and my antenna fell. Many of you who live in... Um, You know, other countries that are not in the U.S., you know how we hang antennas off our balconies. So my antenna, I was living like on the, you know, first uh, floor. When I say the first floor, not the bottom floor. American flooring comparisons are different from the rest of the world. First floor is the first floor off the bottom floor in other countries. And so my antenna was hanging all the way high and a wind blew and it fell down in the middle of the movie. So I never watched that movie completely till date. I just remember the very first and never bothered to go back and watch it because, you know, Nolan's movies came out and man, goodness gracious, you know, to me, those were like the stuff of legend. So when I go back and I see, wow, you know, this was one of my first Batman movies that I ever watched and seeing that it actually is an influence of a game that I actually liked, a game that I didn't think I was going to like. It's kind of interesting to me, and I know this is somewhat subjective as well, but again, this is where the critics have to be watched very carefully. Digital Foundry, you guys are the technical beasts. I get it. But when it comes to the art, sorry, y'all aren't there yet. Maybe get an artist, somebody who appreciates art differently to start to look at things from an artistic perspective. Because at the end of the day, what this has shown me is, as gamers, we got to be really careful who we actually, you know, pay close attention to when we're judging games. In fact, I think we should judge games by ourselves before going back to watch reviews. That's what I did with Gotham Knights. I literally went back and I said, you know, let me actually play this game first. I remember the game came out on that day. I fired up a review and like the first two seconds, I said, no, I'm not going to watch this review. I'm literally going to go into the game first and I'm going to see exactly what this game is about before I take the approach of watching the reviews. And that changed my entire paradigm because I was able to just grapple with the game on its own merits. I was able to actually deal with all the different aspects of the game. And seeing all of this is very interesting overall in how the game's, you know, neon aesthetics and how the building structures and everything is something that has been established before. And you can tell the developers from my perspective where I'm seeing things, I'm not saying it's definitive, they'd have to come out and confirm that. They actually took the approach of following what Batman Forever had done uh, and, you know, Batman and Robin back in the day. Wow. Hmm. Alessandro, thanks so much for pointing this out. I appreciate you for, uh, you know, making this video request because it got me to go around and start doing a little bit more digging because I had seen these images show up before. And it's really interesting to see, you know, (laughs) I'm going to make a side by side comparison in regard to Twitter and uh, 
I'll probably post it up there. I'm going to start a conversation on this. It's very interesting. Thanks so much for watching the video. I appreciate you guys' time and audience. Hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.